Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of uh, calculus-based physics in this video, and we're going to look at an equation that if you've taken physics, you're going to probably recognize this equation. And if you haven't taken physics yet, well, you will see it when you take physics. And basically, it says that the position of an object uh, at some time t is given by its initial position plus its initial velocity times time plus one half of a constant acceleration times time squared. Okay, so where did this come from? It's, it's generally useful for a lot of different things, but where did this come from? Well, Galileo basically said that all objects accelerate towards the Earth with a constant acceleration of 9.81 meters per second squared. So, um, you know, again, I'm, I'm not going to sort of lecture on Galileo, but Galileo had his, um, who knows whether it actually happened or not, but potentially he dro dropped two balls off of the Leaning Tower of Pisa and saw that they accelerated at the same rate and landed at the same time. And so he did some stuff and, and uh, came up with uh, the acceleration of an object near the surface of the Earth without any air friction is 9.81 meters per second squared. And then uh, Isaac Newton uh, uh, and Leibniz developed calculus. so that we could understand equations like this. Okay, so let's just do what, so we're gonna use a little bit of implicit differentiation. We're gonna use some implicit differentiation over here. Okay, so x here is a variable. So the derivative of x is going to be 1 times dx. x naught, that's a constant. So that's a constant, so its derivative is 0. v naught, that's a constant. So And then times t, so it's a constant times a variable. So v naught, so the derivative of t is going to be dt. The derivative of v naught is going to be, well, zero. But, but this is like, you know, if I have y equals uh, y equals two x dy dx equals two. So we're going to say that the derivative of a constant times a variable is going to be the constant times the derivative of the variable. So v naught t derivative becomes v naught dt. Same thing, 1 half at squared. a is a constant, 1 half is a constant, so we get 1 half a, and then we get 2t dt. So that means that I'm going to get uh, dx is equal to v naught dt plus at dt. Then, if I solve that algebraically for uh, get all my d's on one side, if I get all my d's on one side, I got dx dt is equal to v naught plus at. And that's going to be another equation that's going to come up a lot in physics. And that's basically the velocity. So the velocity of a particle is equal to the first derivative of the position and so the velocity of a particle is equal to the velocity at some original time plus the acceleration times the time for which it's been accelerating. Okay, and then we can do this again. I can take the derivative of all of this stuff. The derivative of v is dv the derivative of dx dt is going to be d squared d squared x dt squared, so the second derivative. The derivative of v naught is going to be, well, actually, I should do it this way. 
let's do it that way. Uh, the derivative of v naught is zero. The derivative of a constant times t is going to be that constant dt. And then again, if I divide everything by dt, I get dv dt is equal to d squared x dt squared equals a. So what that's telling me is that the acceleration is equal to the first derivative of the velocity and it's also equal to the second derivative of the position. So that's true for this important equation, but it's general in but it's true in general. So um, first derivative of position, and then so the velocity v of dt, or v of t rather, velocity as a function of time is the first derivative of the position as a function of time, and the acceleration a of t is equal to dv of t with respect to dt, or the second derivative So the acceleration is the first derivative of the velocity or the second derivative of the distance. And that's true in general. So if I've got, um, if I've got a little mass on a spring, and I let it vibrate up and down, bam, 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 it's going to go up and down, up and down, up and down, bounce around. I'm going to, if I look at that, I'm going to be able to say that the, that its position can be given by some function uh, sine of t, and I'm leaving out constants here. So that means that its velocity is going to be the uh, cosine of t, and its acceleration is going to be the negative sine of t. So that has a lot of implications uh, for uh, a lot of different things. And then I think that I showed you something along the lines uh, at one point in time. Here I've got a velocity time. So this is terminal velocity. And if I said that this was, and so if I said that my equation, my velocity is gonna be the terminal velocity times one minus some constant t, then all I'd have to do to uh, find the acceleration would be to take the derivative of this and all I'd have to do to take the 
to find its position would be to take the antiderivative of that. And I'm not going to sort of go into that in this video. I'm just going to tease you with that one. But the message that I want to get in terms of useful equations is that you see it all the time in physics that velocity is the first derivative of the position function, acceleration is the second derivative of the position function, and uh, the third derivative of the position function is very important. Uh, so d cubed x dt cubed is called jerk. And So the next time you get car sick or you get sick on an amusement park ride, blame the third derivative of the position function because that's what's making you sick.